I mean, never mind. I'll let that go. Uh, Bobby, just the way your defense played, how do you feel about the overall performance against Atlanta? Like, what, what kind of things do you think you can build on from, from that game? Uh, I definitely feel like we played fast. I feel like we played physical. Um, you know, we had a lot of guys making plays all over the field. Um, obviously, giving up, uh, I think it was 400 some yards passing is not something that we want to, uh, uh, you know, have happen often. But I feel like it's something we can clean up. And, you know, I'm just kind of excited where we're at. I'm excited about the guys that we have and, and uh, you know, the fun we're having. Pete just sing- signaled out your past defense as one of your better games. What, what do you think stood out for you in that regard? Is some, anything different in the way you're doing it or just a good game for you? Uh, definitely put a little bit more emphasis on it. Um, you know, I think just trying to, you know, make sure no balls get caught over the middle, uh, be a little bit more active um, and just – uh, be more confident and just, you know, take my chance. And so I just was taking my chances more and, and was able to break up a couple passes. Joe Fan. Oh, you mentioned being physical. Pete just said, you know, the, the message is clear. We're coming out to knock the hell out of you. Um, I'm sure that's a mindset that you guys have always had. Every football team wants to be physical. But do you feel like maybe this year you're better equipped to, you know, handle that task? And, and do you feel like you felt that on Sunday? Uh, definitely. I feel like that's always, you know, our mindset, um, you know, since I've been here, you know, you have guys like Cam, uh, you know, coming out hitting dudes at practice uh, it's definitely sets the tone. So, um, you know, I definitely feel like it's something that we want to keep up. I feel like we definitely equipped to to, you know, do this all 16 games. And, and I'm excited to be playing with the guys I'm playing with. How important is it to be able to have that mindset and be able to do that going into a game against Cam Newton? They just ran the ball 42 times. And, you know, it, you know, it might potentially be a a street fight type of game uh, in the trenches, and, and you guys are, are capable of, of handling that. It's very important, uh, especially when you play a team that's committed on running the ball. Um, just it's kind of like a challenge of who, who can be tougher. And so when somebody uh, wants to run 42 times, it's uh, you know really uh, test of your will. And I feel like uh, I like our will. Thanks, Jen. I know that you've seen Cam Newton do just about everything that he can do on a field, but do you have to approach? approach this with maybe fresh eyes in not knowing how exactly the Patriots will use him? Yeah, you definitely have to approach it with fresh eyes. Um, you know, we have a lot of history of playing Cam. Uh, we understand the type of runs that they want to implement with Cam. Um, you know, we also understand that the Patriots have a history of, you know, they coming out and they they can run the ball um, 42 times one game and in the next game throw it 42 times. So, you know, I feel like they'll, they're, they're confident in, in uh, Cam's ability to throw the ball as well. So. Uh, we got to be prepared for for everything, and you know we just have to make sure that uh, we make them one-dimensional and don't let them uh, come out and run and pass on us. AJ. Jamal Adams said playing with you on Sunday was like having Batman and Robin out there <laughs> against the Falcons. Who is Batman and who is Robin? Uh, I'm not really a Batman and Robin fan. I'm a, a Ninja Turtle fan, but if I had to choose. Uh, he could be Batman. I'll be the Joker from uh, The Dark Knight because he was, uh, you know, he was wrecking shop. So I like that. Enough, Nobody, okay. Nobody's ever beat him either. So he's still the best Joker ever. Sounds good. I'll take it. So right. the next question <laughs> is facing somebody like Cam Newton, how much of an advantage is it for you as a defense to go against Russell Wilson, who has a very similar mobility um, mobile abilities as Cam Newton than if maybe you had a traditional pocket passer as your quarterback. How much of an advantage is it to go against Russ every single day in practice? It's definitely a, a little bit of an advantage. I think um, with, with Cam, they do a lot different things, you know, because Cam is, is such a big guy that, you know, uh, they, they run power with him and they run, you know, a lot of QB, a lot of QB uh, runs that, that other quarterbacks don't run. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, with Russell, it's a little bit unique, but still with, with Cam and the, the different variety of runs that they have, uh, something that you definitely have to be uh, ready for. I think he's like 6'5", so if you don't tackle him, he falls forward for like five yards. So uh, we'll have to be ready. Thanks. No problem. Curtis. Bobby, were you surprised at all at how relatively clean the football looked for this opening weekend, given the constraints on the year and the lack of tackling in preseason or anything like that coming up to this point? No, I'm not really surprised. I feel like uh, I feel like we're all professionals. I mean, honestly, I think uh, you know maybe the tackling and you know some of the penalties weren't going to be there, but I mean, I think guys are able to adapt pretty easy. A lot of guys are coming from 
you know, when we were in college, we didn't have a preseason. We just right, went right into the season. So that's kind of been our mindset, just understanding that you had to be ready and that, you know, every game was live bullets and you had to be uh, ready to go out there. So I'm not surprised um, too much, maybe with the, the holding stuff. I thought it would be more holding calls. But, um, you know, I, I, we're all professionals, so we should be able to, to knock this out. And what, what was it like seeing so many, like, pressures from the secondary and the stuff you guys did against Atlanta and, and working that in? And what kind of challenge has that been to kind of adapt that into what you guys have done defensively? Um, I don't think it was pretty much a challenge. I feel like uh, we've done it uh, before. We just, you know, increased it a little bit. So I don't think it, it necessarily changed anything that we did. We just did more of it. And so um, I think it's always exciting to add a new element to the defense. And, you know, you, people have to account for Jamal. So uh, that's fun. Takes eyes off me. Brady. Hey, what's up, Bobby? What's up? Um, nice glasses. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, can you tell the difference? And if so, what is the difference like between, you know, under normal circumstances when you have a Sunday afternoon game at CenturyLink Field versus a, a, a primetime game, evening game? Uh, as far as what, the atmosphere? The atmosphere, the crowd noise, the energy, and all that. Uh, I don't know. I feel like um, since I've been here my rookie year, uh, Coach Carroll's really harped, like, not making one game bigger than another. So, you know, you go into it really with the, the same mindset that it's a, it's a regular game. But as far as, like, the atmosphere, um, I think when it comes to, like, the crowd, um, you know, I think Sunday night games, everybody's getting off of work and they having drinks and stuff like that. So they definitely live more locked in Sunday night um, versus the morning games. But... Um, you know, I think it just kind of depends on the team. You know, there have been uh, games where we play the 49ers where you can't hear yourself and we're standing right next to each other because the crowd is so loud. And it just depends on, you know, who we play in, uh, the time. Um, but you definitely love it when it's loud and the offense can hear. And Pete talked about having to, you know, create your own energy in, in these situations where there are no fans. As a player, how do you do that? Uh, you just get a little bit more jacked up than normal. Um, I think it's fun too. I thought the game was really fun because, uh, because there was no, uh, crowd noise. You was able to hear a lot of stuff that you don't normally hear. So you hear people who cuss that don't normally cuss during the week. And so, um, that, that was fun to hear, uh, to find out some guys have some potty mouths. I don't suppose you'll tell us any of those names. I will not. I will not. You will have to listen on the TV. Thank you. Michael Sean. Uh, Bobby, there's been a kind of a rise, a new class of uh, black quarterbacks since you've entered the league. Uh, what have you thought of that rise? I love it. I mean, I feel like, um, you know, every quarterback uh, presents a unique a uniqueness about their game. I think it grows the game. I think it opens the eyes of people's mentality that the quarterback position has to be one way. Um, that can be done m multiple ways. Um, and so I'm excited to see that. Uh, I think it, especially, um, you know, for the black quarterbacks, I think it gives a lot of young guys um, and inspires them to want to, um, you know, be quarterbacks, be more, you know, we'll have more quarterbacks and, and it's going to be really fun to watch and, and watch the evolution of that position. Thanks. Art. Um, Bobby, Michael Bennett once said that uh, tackling um, Cam Newton was like hitting a tree. Um, if you agree with that, um, it, did you guys ever deliver a hit or a memorable hit on him that said, well, uh, I'm in this game and uh, this is the Seahawks way of playing? Um, well, I don't know why Michael Bennett is tackling trees. I don't know how he, he even has that reference in his, uh, in his repertoire. Um, I think he should stop doing that immediately if he's still doing that. Um, but I think the last... Um, the last time that I can remember us playing him was probably when we were down there and uh, they ran a quarterback play on third down and short, didn't get it. Then he ran quarterback play on fourth down and didn't get it. And then everybody started talking trash and, you know, kind of let them know that we was going to be here. So I, I expect the same type of game. And would you share uh, any of the trash talk? Of course not. Of course not. But maybe you'll hear it because there's no fan noise. Um, unless, unless the, the, um, the TV broadcast puts the fake fan noise in again. I didn't know that that was a thing. I thought you guys were hearing what I was hearing, but I guess not. So we're counting on you. I'm, I'm trying, doing my best. Aaron? 
Hey, Bobby. Uh, Shaq Griffin this offseason joked that nobody really has an excuse not to, to miss any of your calls if there's no crowd noise. So is that the case now because uh, there's not a lot of crowd noise, number one? Number two, um, I'm assuming you would be Raphael. Would that make Jamal Adams Michelangelo because of his attitude, or would you give him somebody else? Um, first of all, Shaq should never miss a call because Shaq should just be in the huddle and listen, and he's still – He's not a rookie anymore, so now he's a young guy, and so now I'm a, he like listens to your older guys, and so he uh, better stay listening, or I'm just withhold the play from him. Um, but as far as Ninja Turtles, yeah, I'm Raphael for sure. I think he's like he he would be Michelangelo. He's fun and and you know exciting, high energy, all that stuff. So I'm cool with that. As long as I get to wear red, I'm good. Jackie. Hey, Bobby, just a quick question on Russ um, with him winning NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Some people, you know, outside of Seattle media or Northwest media have not given him the credit that he likely deserves throughout his career. So what do you think this award, getting it right out of the gate, uh, what message it sends and just how just the impressive performance he had in week one? Um, you know, I don't know if it necessarily sends a message. I feel like the league knows, you know, how great of a quarterback Russell is. Everybody knows, um, you know, what he brings to the game. and. You know, I think the more everybody more watches, uh, hopefully the more everybody appreciates, you know, what he does. And, you know, his ability to escape, run, throw the ball. Um, he has a great, uh, you know, ball down the field. You know, he's able to make plays on the run. He's able to, uh, you know, move around in the pocket. Um, he's just really, really fun to watch. And I've been fortunate uh, to play with him, you know, as long as I've been playing with him. And so, you know, I feel as, you know, out of the gate, just let you know that he's he's serious and he's been locked in, uh, just as locked in he's always been, and, and um, I'm excited to see it. And you know, whether they see it or not, I think you know it's important for his teammates to appreciate it, and, and we do. Thank you. Last one for Bobby, Tim Booth. Hey, Bobby. Um, the NFL had some social justice, racial equality slogans and stuff painted around the the field. Um, last week, and, I, and my understanding is they're going to do it going forward. I'm wondering if you happen to notice those. Do you think those are effective ways of messaging with everything that's going on right now? I mean, I think it's a start. I think uh, definitely you notice them. I think, um, you know, when you have, like, uh, photographers taking pictures and guys are stretching in the end zone, in the bottom of the end zone, you have in racism or, um, you know, the things that they have. Uh, I think it's definitely uh, cool to see the, the names on the back of the helmets. Uh, I would love for them to loosen up. Uh, on what names we were able to use and not just kind of put us in a box on certain names. But, you know, I think it's a, you know, you appreciate their efforts and you just want whatever happens to continue and you want it to be real and not just gestures or not just something that they're doing to react in the moment. You want it to be something that is a, a, a start or a beginning to a forever change. Bobby, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Bobby. Take it easy.